she begins to warm up to the monster because it's clear this monster is not going to leave. It's her forever shadow. She has to go through the journey of acceptance in order to be able to proceed life in a healthy way. If you think about it, the most intimate relationship you ever experience is with yourself. And so it's this relationship between them. I'm Cam Redlask, and I'm 42 years old. I live in Los Angeles, and I'm an industrial designer, illustrator, disability advocate, and writer. When I was born, I was actually abandoned in Daegu, South Korea, and I was adopted by a family in Michigan. And I had a pretty regular Midwest working class upbringing. I had a lot of fun with my brothers. We did a lot more tomboy type of sports, and I played soccer for about 13 years up until through high school. And that was when I noticed um, there was things that were different about me physically. But at the time, I didn't know what was really going on. I played soccer, and about my junior year, I would just, it was such a disconnect with my body. I would think, kick, and, and nothing would happen. And so right there, I had a suspicion something was wrong, and, and that began the whole process of um, coming to know that I had a very rare muscle wasting disorder called genie myopathy. It took about five years and five different diagnoses to truly figure out what was going on with my body. So with disability, it's interesting. Everyone tends to clump us all as the same, but it's incredibly diverse. Everyone has different conditions, diseases, and parameters that are evolved around their situation. For me, it's progressive, but a progressive condition is very different because with it, you're forced to constantly adapt to a moving target. You're constantly forced to adapt to loss. It's not just one time and that's it, and, and then you kind of adapt your life to it. This is every week, every month, every year. Something is changing and I'm losing something. I'm not just losing parts of my physicality, but I'm losing things that I loved and used to do, things that I equated my identity to. That's been one of the most difficult aspects of having a progressive condition. I also think what a progressive condition has forced me to do is look at other things rather than my physicality. For that I'm really grateful for because it's not only pushed me to live my life knowing that it's progressive and I do have time, but one day I won't have any mobility left. With that, it really gave me a focus and a purpose that my life isn't over, but I know these things will be over one day. And so I'm going to live. I've always had a connection to the desert pretty much throughout my entire life. When I was a kid, it kind of parallels a lot of the feelings I had as a child of loneliness and isolation, which could have been for a number of things, but probably was greatly attributed to being an adoptee. At the time, I didn't have the words or the language to explain why that was, but as an adult, I can see, you know, just from a vista point viewing your life, it was definitely like a desert-like feeling growing up as a child. And it's interesting because my whole life, I've really been attracted to the abandoned or isolated whether it's people, where I'm always looking for the ones who are lonely because um, I think because I've lived, had experience of loneliness. It's a clear thing that's popping up in my life all the time. And then when I was growing up as a teen, going through the whole aspect of uh, something was happening in my body and I didn't know what it was, and then I had to go through that stage of the diagnosis uh, for years alone, 
that was a really difficult It was just something really difficult to go through alone. And I didn't realize how difficult until I was an adult. You just wished it wasn't happening or you wished that it would stop happening. The desert really just symbolizes a lot of my life. So eventually I kind of, kind of just sought out to lead my own, uh, be my own best advocate and find out what was going on. And while I was going through this diagnosis stage, I started using a cane and then leg braces as my legs were weakening. But it was really frustrating because my body was weakening, but I had no answers. And every time I would get an answer, I would find out it was not the correct diagnosis and so I'd have to start all over again. What was really difficult about this was I was doing it completely alone um, because I wasn't really believed. I was basically visiting these hospitals all by myself, but it wasn't until I was at 40 that it really hit me like what that time of my life was like. And, um, over 20 years of living with this and still gets me to talk about it, you know, just to hear it out loud. It makes it feel real. Even though you've lived with it your entire life, it's still, you know, it's happening now. So it's not something that has, not talking about something that has happened, I'm talking about something that is happening. For me, my disability has never stopped my relationship with nature. I didn't have disabled role models. I didn't see disabled people in nature. I just knew I liked road trips and I went to nature. So I didn't really think, oh, should I be invited or not? Or can disabled people do this? At the end of the day, at the end of a road trip, when I'm looking in the rear view mirror, it's, it's inherent that there is a little bit of sorrow because you wish you could have seen more. It would be nice if I could do so much more on nature if national parks or thought of disabled people and when they're creating trails, trails that are flatter or things that we can um, traverse, air, outside areas or things like that. What I want disabled people to know is, even if you don't feel accepted, find ways to get out in nature. You don't have to be accepted to do something. And that is how things change, I think through stories because uh, a lot of people just don't know. And so the more they see us, the more they will think of us. A lot of people, able-bodied people, just think that we have no interests or we don't want to come out of our house or we don't want to do things. And a lot of times you don't see us because things are not accessible. But what they don't see is, well, one, we're just human and normal like everyone else. We have the same passions, same curiosities, same you know, heartaches and same you know, struggles that everyone else does. I just wish they could understand um, the difficulties, not to feel sorry for us, but to understand why accessibility is so important. I think with disability, it's such a hard experience to imagine, which I often think of. Imagination is just empathy and creative motion. But to really um, want to understand what, that, what life is like for them, 
is to require empathy, which provokes change. Uh, changing minds, changing laws, changing accessibility, changing the structure that includes all people, whether it's disability, different genders, race, everything. It's important to represent the spectrum of the human condition that exists.